What's up YouTube? Welcome back. So in this video I want to talk about Iggy Azalea's baby daddy problems and sort of compare the reaction that people are having with her baby daddy issues and compare that reaction to the reaction that people are having with um, Summer Walker's baby daddy issues. And I'll say that both women are um, being held accountable and responsible, but I do feel like some people are probably more sympathetic towards Iggy Azalea versus Summer Walker. And I feel like that's partially, well, for one, I'll say it's due to race, and I feel like people are just more conditioned to be more sympathetic towards, say, white women versus black women. And perhaps maybe as well, um, people may say like, oh, well, Summer Walker, she was with a guy who already had kids and she already saw his lack of involvement in co-parenting when it came to his kids that he has at the moment. So, yeah, that's an argument, too. But I don't I, I don't feel like people are really taking that into consideration. I just think that people are just operating out of just their instinct. Yeah. Because I don't even think a lot of people even know about Summer Walker's baby daddy issues. I think Iggy Azalea's, her baby daddy issues are making the blogs and the tabloids and the entertainment media, like it's making waves in that sector you know, Iggy, you know, low-key is getting promo from her baby daddy drama versus Summer Walker, which may be a good thing. I mean, I don't want black women to be yet even more the face of, you know, single motherhood, uh, you know, deadbeat fathers for their kids, out of wedlock birth. etc right i don't think that would be the best thing for black women right <laughs> you know black women got enough issues to deal with and they already deal with that as it is so thankfully summer walker it seems like her story is kind of not getting pushed in the mainstream like that you know and i think partially it's just because people are more familiar with iggy azalea um, but um, I do think that people are quicker to make excuses for Iggy Azalea's poor judgment versus Summer Walker's poor judgment. For some reason, like even people in the comment section, even some black women, <laughs> some male identified black women or some black women who just so badly wants to play mammy to you know this white woman and her biracial child because we got those type of black women too and then there's a black woman who be feeling like you know i can relate to her because i got a no good deadbeat baby daddy too girl <laughs> and like bonding over like this trauma you know and granted i'm sure there's some people who are trying to you know trauma bond with summer walker but um Nevertheless, I do think that Iggy Azalea is getting more sympathy and people are making excuses for her poor judgment versus Summer Walker's poor judgment. Like Iggy Azalea, like she put pretty much all her business out there via social media, via a live stream. And based on all the information she posted, I'm like, well, okay. But you were still there up until about five days ago and this has been going on throughout your whole pregnancy and you even at one point like you kept your pregnancy a secret because she says she wanted to be more open about her pregnancy and you know pretty much just announced that she's pregnant and, you know it's a happy joyous time for her you know but Playboy Cardi said that it would interfere with his promo for his new album which I heard that people are not receiving very well for one reason or another. 
to keep it real, I wasn't really familiar with this guy until I heard about this situation he's in with Iggy Azalea. Um, and, you know, Summer Walker, she does have an industry due to um, London on the track, producer. So <clears throat> she might be able to get a good child support check out of the situation. You know, Iggy Azalea might get a good child support out of the situation, maybe. But, you know, watch how they try to portray Iggy Azalea in the media. Watch how they're going to try to portray her. They're going to make sure to portray her as, like, the victim in all this, you know. Because the media, the mainstream media, we know who runs the mainstream media. And, yeah, they're going to push this story, believe it or not. They'll push this story for some likes, clicks, views, subscriptions, comments, whatever. You know, rating points. But... They'll make sure to frame the story a certain way. They'll frame it so that we know that Playboy Cardi is a deadbeat dad who does nothing for his child and that he did Iggy Azalea wrong. And she's just the innocent mama trying to get, you know, trying to advocate for her son and to get Playboy Cardi to live up to his responsibilities as a father, right? And I'm not really mad at that in itself, ourself, you know. <clears throat> I think that's not asking too much. Um, but when it comes to the portrayal of, say, black women in situations like this, I don't know if they would get that same treat. Right, I don't think people would treat black women like that. It would be more like, well, you made a mistake. You know, kind of like, look how people did Sierra to an extent. Um, black people especially. I'm not, not so sure about the mainstream media per se, but definitely black folks though. You know, when she had a slipped up, or I don't even know if she slipped up, but she had a baby by future. And... It was just like, you know, you messed up. And then, even still, like, when Sierra, you know, quote-unquote course corrected and got with Russell Wilson, folks still weren't so quick to let her forget where she came from. Not even where she came from, but forget the situation that she was in. And I think as quiet as it's kept, some people were mad that Sierra was able to go through a bad situation and still, like, come out, quote-unquote, a winner, you know, and still win in the situation. You know, a lot of, because a lot of people had opinions about that situation, you know. Um, even Future himself had some opinions about the situation. But, you know, I'm interested to see how all this is going to play out when it comes to Iggy Azalea. And really, um, I do think that Iggy Azalea is foolish, if, you know, being putting it nicely, um, less than smart. <laughs> but for one, though, Iggy Azalea, she's like 29 or 30 years old, and the dude she's with is like 24 years old. How you get him gamed and played? and took it for a ride by someone who is six years younger than you. And also, you've been through a similar situation with Nick Young. You should be aware of the game. You know, you should be aware of um, this type of stuff. Like, I don't know if she just didn't use her common sense. Maybe she thought that she was going to be different because she is a right, if you know what I mean. But, yeah, how did, like, you should, really you should be too embarrassed to even come on social media with this. Just, even if there wasn't an age difference, I do kind of think that she should still be a bit just too embarrassed. Like, let me not put all my business out there. Let me not put this out there for everyone to see and consume and to make jokes about. But, you know, Iggy, she says she real. 
You heard? Drop this and let the whole world feel it. Don't you know, baby, I'm the realest. I can hold you down like I'm giving, giving lessons in physics. You know you should want a bad chick like me. Bad chick like me. Baby, you don't want a bad chick like me. You know, she didn't have her um, black scent on when she was doing the live stream. She was just talking in her regular Australian accent, you know. <clears throat> so, but she was trying to act like she was gangster for a moment. She's like, you know, we should have, you know, beat her up, basically. Or whooped her A. Um, the side chick, Brandy. You know, so she, you know she was like, you know, we should have did that. We should have did that to you. But no, I was trying to be nice to you. But now you're going to get it. You're going to get ghetto, Eggy Azalea. Now I'm see, I'm going to have to go ghetto on you. So here it goes. No money, no family. Out here in the middle of Miami. No money, no family. Out here in the middle of Miami. Make it bounce. Make it, make it bounce. But, but, but make it, make it bounce. Shake it, make it, break it, shake it, make it bounce. For shout, shout, shout. So, you know, Iggy, you know, she's, she, she went ghetto. I tell you, Iggy, she can go ghetto on you in 5.5 .5 nanoseconds. But back to this, though. Um... So watch how the media is going to portray Iggy as sort of like the victim and even trying to push her as like the comeback queen even. Like, oh, she went through a bad situation with her baby daddy, but look at her. She's a strong, white, independent woman. <laughs> and, you know, still we'll see the narrative push that um, black men are deadbeat baby daddies, are, you know, and being the face of deadbeat dads. Of course, not that black men really care. I probably see more black women trying to speak up about that than black men. <laughs> you know, but long story short, you know, both women did know better. You know, or at least there were signs. Now they chose to ignore those signs, and they felt like maybe the signs just didn't apply to them. That it wasn't going to happen to them because they special. Now, I do think they is special. They're a little special up here. You know, not quite not quite the sharpest tool in the shed. But nevertheless, um, even if these women have made an error when it comes to judgment in picking the child's father or their child's father and conceiving a child with deadbeat dudes, um, these dudes still have a legal obligation to their children at least until they turn 18. So I hope that both of these women, especially Summer Walker, definitely try and get as much child support out of these dudes as possible. You know, and really that may even make these dudes want to be more active fathers in their children's lives because, I mean, they are paying money to a, you know, a child. You might as well be a part of the child's life so you can get some of the benefits of being a part of your children's lives. And I really hope um, Summer Walker don't try to do this independent woman thing. Because you know the community love to push that on black women. Oh yeah, black woman. You independent. You don't need a man. All his money. Mm, show sure enough, black woman, you can do it all on your own. You sure can. Oh, they'll push you to do that, right? So that they don't have any responsibilities, like the deadbeat dads don't. And the whole community plays a part in pushing that narrative, whether it's the black men or the black women. The community loves that. They may pretend like they don't especially the dudes, they may pretend like they don't when it doesn't benefit them, but when it benefits them and it allows them to not have to take responsibility and accountability and to pay for children that they fathered, they're going to push that narrative and many black women fall into that because they feel like, well, for one, some women just feel like they may just not have a choice other than just to go it alone. And 
I'm not going to say that that there's no truth in that. But I think sometimes other women may feel like, you know, like they kind of feel some sense of validation by going that strong, black, independent woman route. Uh, and may feel like, oh, you know, I don't need a man money to take care of me and my children. Me and my children won't want for nothing. Right? So, you know, I hope, I don't think Iggy Azalea is going to go that route unless she's just straight up pushed into it. And I, you know, again, we're talking about different cultures here right now in different communities. You know, the community where Iggy Azalea comes from, that may be pushed, but not to the extent that it's pushed in the black community. So I feel like Summer Walker may end up going that. Could possibly, she's more likely to end up going that route. I'm not sure. And then some people may even try to shame her into going that route. Like, well, you picked this baby daddy. You chose a pookie. You chose a Ray Ray. For your baby, you sure did. Now you gotta deal with the consequences. You gotta take responsibility and accountability, black woman, Summer Walker. Don't be asking folks for money. You gotta do it all on your own now. You said you was a strong black independent woman. If you want some busy buying so much weave and lace front wigs and makeup and twerking on Instagram yeah I'm talking to you Megan twerking on Instagram you probably wouldn't be in this situation this your fault black woman you know never mind the slave buck mentality that a segment of black men have never mind that Right, because I've never really heard anyone point blank speak on that and go in on that mentality. Um, not a black man or a black woman, at least in the mainstream. Now, people in the kitchen table talk and what they say behind closed doors, I've kind of heard it behind closed doors now. Um, and one woman was trying to defend it, saying that, you know, um, the black man was bred to be like that, and then one woman was saying, well, the black man ain't a horse. Alright, the black man ain't an animal. The black man gotta take responsibility for what he do. And, again, like the slave buck mentality, like, why hasn't that been called out? Because folks claim to be so concerned about the black family, and the black race, right? And the you know, just the legacy of black people and being pro-black. But folks be afraid to call out the slave buck mentality that some black men have for some reason. Folks act like, like somebody gonna come for them if they call out the black man's slave buck mentality. They acting like someone gonna come for, you know, their livelihood and try to cancel them. If they call out the black man's slave book mentality publicly. Where do you think that came from? And, and that's why we as a community can go in on Sierra and go in on Sierra a lot more than we go in on Future. You know, future, you just get past after past after past. Yeah, people may say a little bit of here, a little bit of something here, a little bit of something there, maybe something, uh, yeah. But folks went in way more on Sierra, right? And future, like, is on his, like, eighth or ninth kid at this point. And really, at this point, I'm just saying, dude, just get a vasectomy. I think you have enough kids. You ain't paying enough in child support, and you still, and again, the women want child support, and then he acting like, he ain't know that that was what they wanted. You know, like, he acting like, well, maybe he maybe he just that dumb. But I did remember him coming out saying, like, oh, you know, they just got pregnant for a child support check. Well, duh. Like, what else they was going to get pregnant for? Because they liked you and wanted you to be 
a father to their kids? Like, really, at this point, I think that, you know, yeah, the women going to get a good child support check, but it's like seven other kids and maybe seven other baby mamas that you got to deal with. Is it really worth that? You know, again, if you're really about that family life and, you know, wanting the best for your kids, is it really worth all that? Yeah, but, you know, they'll shame Sierra for being a baby mama to a no good dude, but not the no good dude, too. Really, they can shame both people. I think across the board, it's deserved and it's warranted. But the shaming just, the shaming and the concern and the animosity, whatever you want to call it, just like, that energy just ain't there for the wild slave bucks on the loose. But yeah, let's see if someone calls out the slave buck mentality. Let's see how the black community reacts to that. The black man's slave buck mentality. Let's see how the black community reacts to that. Someone who has like a platform and who is able to, you know, push a message. You know, push an idea, a concept, an agenda, whatever. Let's see how that happens. Let's see how that plays out in the media. Um, if it's a black woman, oh, you know for sure they're going to come for her. Especially if she's like a single mama talking about this. Oh, you should have chose better. Don't put it on all black men. All black men ain't do that to you. That's your fault you ain't choose better. And some women will follow along and say the same thing. Now, if it's a black man, I think folks will come for a black men, but to a lesser extent, though. Um, you know, I think it won't be as bad if a black man was to send out that message. And really, to an extent, it should be a black man sending out that message. And really, I don't think that the message is, like, a bad message. It's a good message to send out. But I think that people get in their feelings because they feel like they're being attacked because they know that, deep down they may have that mentality so they don't want to feel uncomfortable you know they don't want to feel like oh they're doing something wrong they're at fault but they are you know and i just bring all that up to say that yeah we can go in on black women's choices poor choices when it comes to who they have kids with that is a conversation that definitely needs to be had but the conversation that often gets overlooked and ignored is the conversation about black men and their choices and their mentality the slave book mentality that some black men have that's a conversation that i just don't think that the community wants to have for some reason and if they do have it they're going to find a way to blame it on either the system of white supremacy or black women choosing better. It's going to be put on one of those two groups. It's not going to be put on black men doing better. And best believe if we have this conversation, those that's how it's going to play out. Unless someone in that conversation Make sure to keep the conversation on topic because that folks like to come through and derail the conversation and talk about things that aren't really relevant and other people's issues like, oh, well, you got to choose better. Like, yeah, we're talking about we're not talking about that at the moment, though. Right. We'll get to that conversation later. Right now we're talking about you. You know. And for those of you who love statistics so much, you know, statistically speaking, you know how there are, like, differences between, like, white people and black people when it comes to, like, social economic things. Like, oh, getting an education or making money or um, going to jail, things like that. Like, really, if you were to compare the children who were raised by both parents, black kids and non-black kids, like those 
differences tend to go away. Like the kids raised in two parent households are probably less likely to end up in jail because they had a father in the home because usually it's the dudes ended up in jail because they was wilding out and their mom couldn't control them. You know, she did the best that she could, but he was just a wild, misunderstood youth and she couldn't deal with it. You know, getting an education, you know, making sure that that new bro stay in school, etc. Then I know somebody going to come through and be like, well, black women said they were strong and independent. Just what being strong and independent all about. And, and there's some truth in that, but did black women just wake up one day, I'm going to be strong and independent? Or either, you know, did they wake up that way or did they have to just adjust? Because that was the only route that they could go. Right. We got to be honest about that, too. But let me bring this video to a close. I don't want to go on for too long. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.